No Shave November. I think it's going okay. Hello everyone, this is Foxy Papa Smurf or FPS Gamer for short, and today we're overclocking my graphics card. If you watched my previous video, which you can find here, you'll know that I recently purchased a GTX 1060, the MSI Gaming X version. Now, overclocking has become uh, pretty much a standard amongst high-end gaming PCs and even mid- or entry-level gaming PCs, um, and I can attest to how painless the process really was. The reference version of my card has a GPU boost clock of 1708 MHz. The Gaming X version of that card by MSI has a boost clock of 1809 MHz, so a difference of 101 MHz. I managed to get a stable overclock of 2025 MHz, so more than an additional 200 over the overclocked version of this card. You can see how much headroom there is here, and we'll see in a moment how this translates into performance. The memory clock is also important because the standard reference version of this card has a memory clock of 8000 megahertz, which is pretty good until you consider the Gaming X version has a memory clock of 8100 megahertz. I have a stable overclock of 9000 558 megahertz. So why overclock? Well, it's pretty simple. You want to get as much performance out of the hardware that you purchase as possible. Overclocking is free performance. It doesn't cost anything. Is overclocking safe? Uh, the short story is yes, especially today, especially with the software that's available. It's very rare that you're going to do any lasting damage to any of your hardware if you overclock it correctly. Does it reduce the lifespan of your card? Technically, yes. Te technically, yes. Uh, running it at a, a, a speed higher than it's rated for is going to wear out the card faster. And what really wears out the cards is that temperature differential, the card getting really hot and cold and really hot and cold over and over. So if you can keep, if you can keep those temperatures relatively stable, um, you're going to prolong the life of your card, whether you're overclocking it or not, because the hardware is expanding and contracting with those differences in temperature. You're probably going to replace that card long before you see any repercussions from uh, overclocking it. Now let's talk a little bit about my process. So what we have here is EVGA's Precision X, and there have been um, some issues with this software in the past, full disclosure, but it seems to be, at least from my experience, pretty stable. So the first thing you, you're probably going to want to do, and people have different techniques of doing this, but the way I personally did it was go into, first, the fan curve. The processor puts off heat, and the more work it's doing, the more heat's going to be coming off of it. So you want to adjust your fan curve uh, to be a little bit more aggressive. Now this is one of the few parts during the overclocking procedure where it's kind of at your discretion. And I say that because these GPU fans can get a little bit loud. So if that's an issue for you, if you're going to be uh, recording your voice and your microphone is in close proximity to your rig, or if you just don't like the noise or, or whatever the case may be, this is kind of up to you. Uh, make it as aggressive as you feel comfortable. So for me, I first messed with the GPU clock without touching the memory clock and found a spot where I could run all of my benchmarks and it wouldn't crash. Right now I'm sitting at 112 megahertz above the stock frequency. Once that's good, you move on to the memory clock and this is where you see a huge increase, 775 megahertz over. Uh, and from what I've read online, people are getting some pretty amazing overclocks on memory fre frequency, which does actually play a part in the performance of your card. You can actually see a measurable performance gain. Sitting at 2025 megahertz, I have Doom open here on the right monitor uh, and the Precision X tuner on the left monitor. And it's measuring the GPU clock and memory frequency and GPU temp and you can see um, that those numbers obviously increase now that the GPU is actually doing something. But that's essentially how it works. It's just a balancing act between testing out different GPU clocks and memory frequencies and voltage limits, uh, fan curves, and then testing it all in different benchmarks, getting the highest possible performance. Or they even have like automated software that will just kind of give you a, a pretty safe overclock. It's not going to be the best overclock you can possibly get, but it's going to be a safe overclock that will get you a measurable performance gain. If you'd rather go that route, that, that software is available. But let's get to the part that you guys are actually really here to see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the benchmarks. Uh, I'm going to go through them pretty quick because I took a lot of data and I don't want this video to be super long. So obviously you can pause the video at any time if you see a particular benchmark that interests you. I'm going to spend about five seconds on each one. So let's roll the benchmarks. <laughs>
So as you can see, there is a distinguishable difference. As a matter of fact, in a lot of those benchmarks, the performance gains that I got from overclocking my GPU were about identical to the performance gains I got from switching from my 970 to my 1060. And I was even impressed by uh, that delta of performance. So pretty much a free upgrade, really. I mean, that was absolutely free I mean, apart from the time that it takes. I also did a comparison of the 970 versus the 1060 versus the overclocked 1060. Um, I personally think that information is actually a little more interesting. So let's roll those benchmarks. First and foremost, the performance obviously increased everywhere, and the synthetic benchmarks especially saw some very impressive numbers. Uh, I'm really glad I decided to overclock this card. I'm excited that there was so much potential uh, hidden in there, especially when it comes to the memory clock. That was really cool to see. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, this took a fair amount of effort to gather this information for you guys. I, I mean, I, I love numbers. I love kind of calculating this stuff and, and seeing a graphical representation of this information. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. Um, let me know if you do down in the comments section below, um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.